Hello and welcome to this clip on uh, looking at the effects of procedural errors in enthalpy measurement. Now, Normally when the um, enthalpy change of combustion of a substance is measured industrially, such as with the food industry, um, it's done by something like this, a bomb calorimeter. So for example when you go and buy some food in the shops, it'll generally carry um, an energy content um, on its label and it'll have to do this by law so that people who are um, counting the number of calories that they're eating or consuming uh, can do this when they're shopping can check what they're buying and what they're going to cook so why don't you grab a scrap of paper pause the clip and see if you can identify where this piece of apparatus the bomb calorimeter has been adjusted to minimize heat loss so the air jacket provides insulation the fact that it's electrically heated as opposed to heated by an external flame means that it takes place in sealed conditions. The reaction takes place within the calorimeter, so the heat has nowhere to go but into the water. So there's two lids and seals to minimise loss of heat through any gaps at the outside of the calorimeter. And finally we have a stirrer. And this maximizes the efficiency of the distribution of heat throughout the water sample. So there's lots and lots of things going on here that actually help the process take place as efficiently as possible. So finally, the oxygen under pressure maximizes the chance of the combustion being complete, so giving out the maximum energy and therefore being as accurate as possible. Now, unfortunately, this kind of setup is quite expensive and, and fiddly to, to, to set up and use, so we don't have the opportunity to use this in A-level chemistry. And besides, part of the idea in A-level chemistry is, be, is to be able to evaluate the quality of the experimental setup that you're given. Not so much whether it's accurate or not, but if it's not accurate, why? And how is that going to actually affect the delta CH that you end up calculating? So let's now look at a typical A-level style setup. So this is a typical setup. Um, why not pause the clip again this time and see if you can work out where procedures have been put in place to minimize heat loss and where also it's been it needs to be improved. So thinking about um, where it needs to be improved first of all, uh, the two places I'd recommend you look at are the space between the flame and the um, calorimeter and also the fact that there's no lid. And in addition, might there be a problem with the fact that you're using a glass beaker? A glass beaker is made of a non-conducting substance so it's going to be difficult for the heat to cross the boundary um, into the water. So there's some improvements as well, so it's not just a series of errors. And this goes some of the way to preventing sideways heat loss due to air movement in the lab. In addition, the thermometer itself is only coming into contact with the water, not the glass which would have a different specific heat capacity. So let's now have a look at things that are maybe not quite so easy to control. One of the main things that we uh, struggle to control is any alcohol vapour that escapes sideways from the wick before it ignites. So the liquid alcohol travels up the wick and once it reaches the outside, the open air, it starts to evaporate immediately. Most of it will actually ignite, but there might be a small amount that escapes. So these are the two calculations that we use. And what we've got to try and think about is what are the different things that could be affected. So I've listed all the different um, uh, things that might be affected, the different individual components of each calculation on the right-hand side in red. And what we're going to do now is go through a series of possible scenarios that might affect one or more of those so if some alcohol evaporates, 
So if some alcohol evaporates, the effect is that the difference in mass, me the difference in mass measured does not equal the mass of the alcohol that's been burned. So in other words, you measure the mass of the spirit burner before and after carrying out the burning. And hopefully the difference in that those two values will equal the amount of fuel that's been burned. If some of the fuel is evaporated and not burnt, like we talked about a couple of minutes ago, then the difference in mass is not going to be equal to the mass of alcohol burned. In other words, it will be lower than assumed. So this means the number of moles actually goes down. So the moles in your calculation will be actually bigger than the moles actually burned. So the effect is that the calculated enthalpy value will be less exothermic than expected. So let's now look at the effect of some water evaporating. Basically you're now heating less water than you originally assumed. So that's going to affect Q equals mc delta t. The mass you're assuming you're using will be too big because some of the water will have gone. So Q will be bigger than it should be. So you end up with a more exothermic value for delta CH. Notice I didn't say bigger, I just said more exothermic. It's important to make that distinction. So if some incomplete combustion occurs, incomplete combustions are less exothermic than their complete um, counterparts. The temperature change will therefore be lower, heat change will be lower. So what about if you spill some water while you're pouring it into the calorimeter when you're setting up? The assumed value of M will be too big. So this time Q will be too big because M is too big. So therefore the calculated enthalpy will be more exothermic than it should be. OK, so let's have a look at this question. It gives you a few things to have a think about. It's obviously the same setup that we've looked at earlier on in the, in the clip. And it says the student measured 100 centimetres cubed and poured it into the beaker. Then they measured a temperature rise of 10.5 degrees C. So that means the temperature rise uh, tells us that the reaction is exothermic. So the student calculated the amount of energy transferred to the water. So then it says the student calculated the amount of energy transferred. Their enthalpy change calculated value was less exothermic than the value in the data books. So what this actually means is that less heat was given off than the data book suggested there should have been for that particular fuel, whatever it happens to be. Then it asks you to look at three errors. And it's a multiple choice question, so you've got four different combinations. The way to approach this type of question is to look at each error in turn and very carefully think about what effect that mistake is going to have on the overall temperature change. Is the temperature change that he gets going to be more or less? So the first error where the student removes the burner but the fuel keeps getting used up, even though it's not heating the water anymore, means the recorded temperature change doesn't account for this additional combustion. The moles calculated are higher than the moles that heated the water, so calculated enthalpy value is less exothermic or less negative. Notice how I've said less exothermic rather than just saying it's lower. You have to be a little bit careful when you're dealing with the numbers like this, so it's less exothermic. In the second error, the student recorded the final temperature after the water had had five minutes in which to cool down. Therefore, the heat change Q Q equals mc delta t, will be lower because delta t will be much less. And so the resulting value for the enthalpy change again will be less exothermic. So in the final error, the mass of water actually being heated will be lower than what the student thought because they've spilt some. But they haven't realised that that's affected the total mass of the water that's now being heated in their, in their, their container. So the value for m, which is the mass of water, in Q equals mc delta t will be too high. 
So that means Q will be too high. So the numerator, Q, in other words, in delta CH equals Q over moles, will not be too big as well. This will give a more exothermic delta CH value. So, the original question asked us which of the following errors could have contributed to this result? In other words, that the calculated enthalpy change was less exothermic. Now, having thought about it, it's obviously only error 1 and error 2. So that means our answer should be B. So that's basically how you do this type of question. Um, generally, they come up as multiple choice questions, but if you're not careful and you're not, not knowing what to look for and what to think about, they're the kind of multiple choice question you could end up either leaving out or it could end up slowing you down. You could spend five, ten minutes trying to think that through if you're not careful. So what have you got to do? You've got to think carefully about the effect on delta CH of all of the different factors we've talked about earlier and then look at the description of the errors and work through them carefully trying to suss out which uh, part of the calculation procedure that particular error will affect. Will it affect Q? Will it affect M? Will it affect uh, moles? Etc. Etc. So once again, thanks for your time, thanks for listening, hope you found it useful, and see you soon.